Office 365 with Exchange Online allows us to set up something called remote domains. Let's get into the remote domain area and then we can explain the reasons for having a remote domain and what we can do with it. So while we're in our Office 365 homepage, click on the admin icon, which takes us to the Office Admin Center. Go down to the lower left side where it says Admin Centers and click on Exchange. Once you click on Exchange, you'll see this new tab where it says Exchange Admin Center. On the left hand side, click on Mail Flow and at the top, click where it says Remote Domains. So now we're in the same place and we can take a look and see what we want to do. So by default, Microsoft says, if we click on the uh, edit for the pencil, that all domains that are not within the inside of our domain, which would be the techpublishing.net or the clickx3.onmicrosoft.com, which we set up in previous videos. So any other domain other than the ones that we receive email on are considered remote and they should be treated a certain way. So the, the way we have uh, this set up by default is the way Microsoft sets it up for us, which is it allows out of office automatic replies. It allows the automatic replies and automatic forwarding and it allows message reporting and it does not use the uh, uh, or I should say it follows the user settings whether to allow rich text format or RTF files. So why would we want to change this or why would we want to create a new one? Well, there's several different reasons. Let's start by creating a new remote domain and talk about that. So Microsoft says that there are several reasons why you may want to create a new remote domain. One is there may be certain domains where you don't want to let your users forward messages to people at those particular domains. Uh, you may also work with an organization where you don't want to receive automatic messages such as non-delivery reports. So let's say, for instance, you send out a lot of emails to a particular client, and if you get non-delivery reports, you don't want those to come back to you or your users because it just clutters up your inbox. Same thing with out-of-office replies as well. You may also have a business partner outside your company and you want that partner to receive the same out of office replies as those received made by your internal organization. And another reason would be your users frequently send email to a company that supports limited email formats. And as men mentioned uh, previously, the rich text format, you may want to turn that off or you may want to always turn that on rather than following the user settings. So let's go ahead and set this up and see how this is going to be affected. So we'll say we've got the name test.com and we'll give that the name of the remote domain as well. And let's say in this particular case, uh, anytime we send emails off to test.com, we do not want to have out of office uh, automatic reply types. Or we want to say, you know what, they're a, a good partner with us. We want to send them the same internal out of office replies that our users have when they go on vacation, which may be more personalized than the public uh, external out of office replies. Then we have the automatic replies. So an automatic reply would be such as uh, an email that was sent to a user and you have a rule set up to automatically re reply that they've received that email. So we want to say, hey, you know what, for this particular domain, we don't want those automatic replies happening. We also don't want anything automatically being forwarded either. So on our default connector, for remote domains, it will allow these things. But for test.com, we don't want to do that for whatever particular reason that I mentioned earlier. And as far as message reporting goes, do we want delivery reports? Well, we can say, no, we don't want delivery or non-delivery reports because in this case, there's a lot of them and they just clog up our mailbox. And as far as rich text format, we can say, yes, always use that because they require that because they have an odd email system that requires RTF files in order to read them. And then you've got MIME and non-MIME character sets for um, other languages that you can also add in if you know that they communicate using another language. And when you're all done setting this custom uh, remote domain connector up, then you can just go ahead and click save. And now email sent only to the test.com domain will have those spe uh, specific rules set up. All the default ones, all the other ones will use the default rules that are set up previously by Microsoft. 
So you can add as many of these different connectors for remote domains as you need, and you can customize them the way you want. 